Step 2. Quantum cloud. What is the quantum cloud? Well, it doesn't really exist yet, so we can only present to you a loose description. But basically, it's any form of interaction between a client and one server or multiple servers that requires exchange of quantum states, pre-shared entanglement, and utilizes quantum networks or even internetworks in the form of a quantum internet. So the main focus of quantum computation over quantum cloud, as opposed to the classical cloud, which we talked about in the previous step, is privacy and security, and integrity of data and verifiability of data. So in this step, we're going to give you a general outline of how these blind quantum protocols work over the quantum cloud. So the main protagonists in the quantum cloud are the client. So the client is basically anybody who cannot run their own full, fully-fledged quantum fault-tolerant computation. So they have some limited quantum resources. And how they are limited could vary on a different scenario. So for example, they could be limited in terms of the number of quantum memories that they have access to. Or they could only perform simple operations like single qubit gates or single qubit measurements or they can generate only single qubit states. Or, in fact, they could have no quantum resources whatsoever. The, the client could be fully classical. So all of these scenarios up here, where the client possesses some quantum resources, refer to that client as a semi-classical client, as opposed to the fully classical down at the bottom here. In terms of the end nodes that we talked about in the previous lessons, all of these are variants of either the computational nodes or some state generation nodes. The previous quantum computation nodes that we used is we assumed that there was some storage capacity and also uh, the client was able to perform some simple quantum uh, operations. But here we see a much more fine-grained picture. Although in our protocols we're going to use uh, the quantum computation uh, symbol for all of these clients, unless they are fully classical. And the other protagonist in the quantum cloud is the server, the quantum server, which is in our scenarios always a full universal quantum computer that has virtually unlimited quantum storage and is capable of fault-tolerant quantum computation. So let's see what are the various scenarios of computing in a quantum cloud we're going to consider interactive schemes. This is where the semi-classical or a client is interacting with a quantum server and it happens in rounds. And in each round, the client sends some instructions to the quantum server and receives a reply back. Based on that reply, the uh, client generates a new message and sends it to the server, which then replies with a new reply. And so on and so forth. So it's an interactive session. All of, this, all of the schemes, the interactive schemes that we consider uh, in our lessons, will include multiple rounds of both classical and quantum communication, and the client will always be semi-classical. So the client will have some quantum memory capabilities and will be able to apply single qubit unitaries uh, or generate single qubit states. And typically all of these schemes um, are between a client and a single server. And then the states, that are communicated from client to the server can be sent directly, or we can use quantum teleportation via uh, pre-shared entangled bell pairs between the client and the server. A different scheme is non-interactive scheme. This is where the client engages in only one round um, of communication between the client and the server, and then the server sends the reply back to the client. Or it can be fully one way where the server performs some operation and then sends the information back to the client when the client processes this information. Again, in this, uh, these schemes, the client is semi-classical, and namely, it has, it, uh, the client has the ability to perform single qubit measurements, as we will see in one of the schemes that we discuss. And again, typically, there is only one server. And the quantum states can be sent either directly or using quantum teleportation. Another scheme is between a client and multiple servers. In this case, the client can be fully classical. The client does not require any quantum resources whatsoever. 
On the other hand, the servers must share entanglement. Not only that, that's the easy part. The difficult part is that the servers must be non-communicating. In other words, they cannot send messages between each other. If they can, then blindness and verifiability will be broken, as we will see later. And in fact, this non-communicating requirement is very difficult to ensure and maintain. We might separate the quantum servers to be long distance apart, ignoring all the computations that come from the uh, quantum networking part in terms of distributing entanglement within these servers, but ensuring that these servers remain non-communicating is very difficult. So these are the main scenarios that we're going to talk about in this and the next following lesson.